increased success of mills, and ease of access to Boston markets were factors that caused population growth. Proliferation of large single-family homes and multi-family workers housing near the mills emerged. Chester Sprague, Ward and Horace Otis, and Samuel Gleason were members of the Watertown Land Company. At the head of Pearl Street, Northwest Marshall Street, Marion Street, and Oliver Street, they developed the area known as Whiting Park. North of Watertown Square lies Whitney's Hill, which received its name according to Saul and F. Whitney because John Whitney Sr. and his sons in the early decades of the century owned the north and west slopes of the hill. Later called White Hill in the 1890s, it was a popular recreational area for the town in the winter for sledding and in the summer for picnicking. In the early 1890s, the Watertown Land Company bought the Nathaniel Whiting Estate, which included part of White's Hill, and developed it as an affluent upper middle class neighborhood. Twelve and fourteen Marshall Street is known as the Ward M. Otis Double House. It was built between 1879 and 1889 when it was owned by Ward M. Otis. However, he did not live here, but was probably involved in its construction. Otis, a merchant and real estate developer, was a principal in the Watertown Land Company. He also built the Otis Block. The first identified occupant of this house is William R. Holland, a dyer, who was there by 1892. In the late 1890s, Linus Allen Shaw, a policeman, was an occupant. 11 and 13 Marshall Street, built in 1884 in the Queen Anne style, is known as the William Edwards Double House. This home was built between 1879 and 1884 when it was occupied by Noah Sweat, a bank cashier at Union Market National Bank. Sweat was still there in 1892 when Andrew Hawes, a salesman, and E.L. Gibbs were also in residence. It is likely that William Edwards, who is shown as the owner on both the 1889 and 1898 atlases, and who also owned 43 and 45 Marshall Street during this period, built the house as a rental property. Edwards probably bought the property from Charles Brigham, who as early as 1874 owned all the land on both sides of Marshall Street. With 18 Marshall Street was built in 1886 in the Queen Anne style. It is known as the Alberto F. Haynes House. Although specific documentation is lacking, it is believed that Haynes designed his own house, which also served as his business address. Haynes moved to this home in 1886 and lived there with his wife until he died January 18, 1926. Haynes' architecture career began in 1874, but at the time he constructed this house, Haynes was also working as a reporter for the Boston Globe, as his career was not yet sustainable. Haynes was a successful local architect, designing at least 15 structures in Watertown, including the Otis Building, the Watertown Fire and Police Station, Lawando's Cleaning and Dying, as well as a variety of residential homes. While living in Watertown, he was town assessor and water commissioner. He also wrote articles on the military history of Watertown. He was active in the preservation of local history, working with the historical society in their mission to preserve cemeteries and keep a written historical record. Haynes belonged to the Unitarian Church, where he served for many years as superintendent of, Sunday, of the Sunday school program. Born in Waltham, Haynes married Lizzie Hale Stanley. The couple had two children, a son who died at the age of 16, and a daughter, Ruth, who lived at 73 Marshall Street at the time of her father's death in 1926. Haynes probably purchased this land from Charles Brigham, another notable Watertown architect and neighbor at 34 Marshall Street. 19 Marshall Street, built in 1882 in the Italianate style, is known as the George S. Johnson House. Johnson was a machinist and probably moved to this home from Palfrey Street. He owned and occupied 19 Marshall Street until about 1895. By 1898, the owner li was listed as J.T. Stevens. He was not listed in the city directory. 24 Marshall Street, built in 1893, is known as the William A. McCurda House. Maps indicate that Haynes subdivided his lot, which he used to build 18 Marshall Street, to also build 24 Marshall Street, which he continued to own until at least 1897. By that time, William A. McCurda had moved in. 
Makurta was an insurance and real estate salesman auctioneer. He lived at 24 Marshall Street for at least the next 12 years. 34 Marshall Street was built either in the 1860s or early 1870s. It was the first house on Marshall Street. Sturgis and Brigham, a preeminent late 19th century Boston architecture firm, was formed in 1866. The firm was a partnership of John Hubbard Sturgis and Charles Brigham, a Watertown native, civic leader, and early preservationist who helped save the Edmund Fowle House by moving it to his land. The first ident identifiable occupant of 34 Marshall Street was Mary Brigham, who is listed as Marshall Nair Spring in 1877. In the 1880s, Charles Brigham also lived at 34 Marshall Street with Mary Brigham. When Sturgis and Brigham purchased the large parcel of land that composed the present day first block of Marshall Street, it was subdivided and this was the first house built in the development. Charles Brigham's father had died in about 1872 and Brigham designed this house for himself, his mother Mary, and his sister Maria moving from the family house in Watertown Square. By 1889, 34 Marshall Street was owned by George Parker, a policeman and truant officer. The house remained in the Parker family until at least 1919. 38 and 40 Marshall Street, built in 1897 in the Queen Anne style, is known as the George S. Parker House. George S. Parker moved there from the house next door 34 Marshall Street, where he had been living with George and Charlotte Parker, who were probably his parents. The younger Parker served as town auditor and cashier of Union Market National Bank. The 1898 map indicates that the Parker's land extended to the corner of Spring Street and that the house had a circular carriage drive and a wide veranda spanning the facade. 39 Marshall Street, built in 1884 in the Queen Anne style, is known as the George G. Vaughn House. Vaughn was a molder at the Walker and Pratt Foundry and moved to this home from Summer Street. He owned and occupied the house until his death, after which his widow Florence J. Vaughn was the occupant. It is likely that George Vaughn built the house on land purchased from the eminent Boston architect Charles Brigham. 43 and 45 Marshall Street was built in 1886 and is known as the William Edwards Double House. Built between 1879 and 1886, it is likely that William Edwards, who is shown as the owner on both the 1889 and 1898 atlases, built this house as a rental property. Edwards also owned and rented 11 and 13 Marshall Street during the same period. The first occupant of this house was listed as George L. Wilson, a clerk who lived there beginning in 1886. 68 Marshall Street, built in 1893 in the Queen Anne style, is known as the H.H. Sawyer House. Sawyer ran the Metropolitan Laundry on Spring Street. The laundry had begun in connection with the Hathaway Shirt Company and then expanded to collecting laundry by horse and carriage throughout town, washing 40,000 to 50,000 pieces a week in wood and copper rotary washers. 140 Church Street, built in 1885 in the Queen Anne style, is known as the James P. Niles House. Niles was a local dentist. 13 Oliver Street, built in 1891 in the Queen Anne style. An early occupant of this property was Fred G. Barker, proprietor of the Watertown Enterprise, a local weekly newspaper. 35 Oliver Street, built in 1891 in the Queen Anne style, is known as the Bartlett M. Shaw House. Built on speculation by the Watertown Land Company, this house was sold to Bartlett M. Shaw, a superintendent with the Walker & Pratt Foundry, one of Watertown's most important manufacturers of the time period. 56 Marion Road was built in 1895 with elements of the shingle style. During this time, designs for houses were derived from area prototypes, as well as architectural and carpenter publications. This house is almost identical on the exterior to one built in the Hyde Park section of Chicago in 1885, and may have been copied from photographs. 78 Marion Road was built in 1895 in the Queen Anne Cottage style. 
This house is one of the smaller but best preserved houses in the Whiting Park neighborhood. Thank you.